Welcome to the Zweig Letter Podcast, putting architectural, engineering, planning, and environmental consulting experts straight talk in your ear. These podcasts deliver great interviews with industry leaders and Zweig Group's three decades of invaluable research, leadership, management, marketing, client, and HR advice directly to you, free of charge. The Zweig Letter Podcasts let you develop personally and professionally, wherever you are. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of the Zweig Letter Podcast. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I am excited today because I get to hang out with none other than Dawn Nicole from Brand Disco. Dawn is the VP at Brand Disco, which is a military, uh, and she's also a military hiring and retention consultant. Uh, Dawn, it's so great to have you uh, on the show. We really appreciate you joining us on the Zweig Letter Podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, no, it's awesome. I, I uh, you know, Dawn and I got connected through uh, a mutual uh, contact on LinkedIn. And you know what they say about LinkedIn, you just never know. You're only one degree away from somebody that can help you out in some way, shape or form. And That's- so... Uh, so I was I was really glad that she made that connection for us and that we got a chance to talk and you know I got a chance to learn a little bit about Brand Disco and about what you're doing and you've got a wide and varied storied background and so I'd love for just to kind of let my audience uh, know of of engineers and architects who they who they have the privilege of listening to today. So Don, why don't you tell us a little bit about your superhero origin story and then we'll talk <laughs> a little bit about about this baby of yours, Brand Disco. Go and and why you think it's going to revolutionize yeah. um, the hiring workplace, especially when it comes to to people coming into civilian life from the military. Absolutely. So thanks again for having me, Randy. I am representing one half of Brandisco. I'm the co-founder. My other half is actually the Army veteran. Uh, that we sort of centered all of this around. His name is Demario McElwain. Um, so Brand Disco, first of all, Randy, is short for brand discovery. People always say, oh, disco, is it a dance? And you can dance to the <laughs> tune of your success, I suppose. Right. But um, <laughs> Brand Disco, so really Brand Disco was born out of the need to help people articulate their stories in the, the most beneficial way and, and also to help the recipient understand the power of the story in the most beneficial way. So Brandisco sort of bridges that gap and how it works and what it really is. It's an eight question automated talent assessment that ha- has the power instantaneously, Randy, to tell a consumer. So the person reading or reviewing this information, how this person fits in their civilian market. So how they fit into a culture, how they are compatible with others, what their highest success factors are top takeaways that you can expect before you have to experience them. Um, What's cool about Brandisco is in the results, it's going to not only tell you what the success factor is of a person, Randy, it's going to tell you how to use it to get the best results, when to use it to get the best results, and what happens immediately when you pair this person in a team environment. So essentially, Brandisco is giving a power that used to take hours, days, and weeks to uncover. Um, And how it's specifically helping the veteran market, just to be very clear about this, is that when we first started Brandisco, it was focusing sort of on everyone, entrepreneurs, college students. But what happened is that being that we have an Army veteran ourselves, he, Demario, kind of said, you know what? When I was transitioning out of the military, I wished I had a Brandisco to articulate in a way that makes sense to civilian leaders what my highest and best strengths were. So we sort of took that, went after this market and found out there's a real deficit. There's a real gap where uh, transitioning military are coming into the civilian workforce. They're very afraid. They're very anxious. And they have skills in most cases, but they're buried deep within all of the fluff. They're not sure how to articulate that in the highest and best way. So that's what Brandon School does. It articulates it quickly and it does it for hundreds of veterans at a time. So it beats a manual process at the same time. Yeah, and and that's that's absolutely amazing. I applaud you for just coming up with this and and creating an environment where this could be successful. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes you know, and, and and again, I won't get on my soapbox, but I know that <laughs> you know military veterans sometimes get the short end of the stick. Yeah. Um, uh, 
you know, I could go on and on about healthcare and a, a bu bunch of other things, but yeah. I don't want I don't want to create a partisan conversation. The reality <laughs> the reality is is that if there's some way for us, and when I say us collectively as employers, as entities that can hire individuals that are coming um, out of the military and into civilian life, I mean, I think I can't think of a better way to kind of set set them up for success. Thank you, thank you, Randy. Um, may I, and, and I'll just to your point, I just, I'd like to say something, if that's okay, um, sure. with Brandis go, especially, so let's talk a little bit about veterans and then move this conversation to the engineering space. Cause I'm sure yeah. that's a, a real interesting topic for you. Absolutely. Um, so what we found is that the other thing that Brandis go really does well is Brandis go is going to quickly show you where the anomaly, what's different about what looks the same. And so if you can imagine, if you take engineers and they all have engineering degrees, they seemingly have the right level of experience. Heck, they might have even went to the same school. On paper, they look very similar. And as a, a hiring manager like yourself or an employer, an HR leader, sometimes you get all this good talent and you're thinking, gosh, they all look alike. I don't even know where to begin. What Brandisco is going to do, the power that it's going to bring to you, it's going to tell you amidst the similarity, where is the diversity? What's the dynamic difference that you can't see with the naked eye? And because you don't know the questions to ask or the science, you're generally just going to pick somebody based on gut instinct. So Brandisco is about replacing that instinct with data insights. For example, now that I know that I've got 10 engineers that I'm looking at, how can I tell which one is more of a creative style of engineer versus which one is really dead set on accuracy? This matters. It matters because it sets you up for the experience and it allows you to choose before they come in the door. Yes, I've got 10 engineers, but for this project, I really need somebody who can think out of the box. And sometimes engineers are, you know, challenged with not being able to think out of the box. So you, I'm just saying. <laughs> right, so I know, I know, it's funny. You need yeah. to know that ahead of yeah. time, right? right? But right. equally, you may have an engineer that you want to be very, very data focused. Maybe they're working on a Dodd-Frank project or something regulatory compliance driven. You might not want that uh, creative person bouncing all over the place. That might not be a time and place for the ideation. So it's really about knowing what you're getting before you get it. And, and that's what's dynamic about the levels that you can go with not just choosing, do I want to engineer, but what style of engineer do I want? What personal brand style? Okay. Yeah. Well, no, that makes perfect sense. So, so, so without getting too deep into the secret sauce that is mm -hmm. brand disco, how did you come up with this? How did you actually develop the, the, the questions and, yeah. and how have you continued to refine that process? Oh, and boy, did we ever refine that. <laughs> so, so believe it or not, when brand, what we used to be, first of all, my background, I have um, a degree. So I have a PMP and I'm an agile scrum master. So I'm a person who understands Lean Six Sigma disciplines. So understanding you're talking to a frameworks heavy type of a gal. I love this stuff. And so what happened is after 19 years of corporate leadership, Randy, I left in 2015, started my own firm, and we started a boutique marketing and branding firm. And here's what was happening. What was happening is that step one, regardless of what you're ever going to build, and engineers know this too, regardless of the output or the end result, it always starts with a discovery process of some sort. You're always discovering so you can build whatever's coming next, right? And so what happened is in the business world, uh, when building businesses and brand development, it started with a discovery process. Well, what was happening is that that discovery process was taking way too long for entrepreneurs to give me their, their best value proposition. Well, what's your niche? What do you like to do? Who gravitates toward you? What's your avatar and your profile of working, right? So I was going through a very rigorous discovery process that would either take way too long, Randy, or... Um, we found that they would change their mind midway. And the problem with changing the mind and being unsure is that now I'm building something based on a point in time and then you change your mind and I have to start over. And this would then uh, impact the marketing campaign. So what happened is I took that sort of frameworks thinking. I went to my partner who's very good with coding and systems. And I said to him, what would happen if we came up with some sort of methodology that was a personal branding methodology that could get us closer to someone's personal brand type that would allow us to market them and build a plan uh, that's a little bit more aligned with who they really are, even when they're not sure what that looks like. And so that's what we did. We started an early methodology. Since then, we've had thousands, thousands of people take it, validate it. 
um, I can't even tell you, we've had so many iterations of Brandis Go to get it market ready. Because when we first started, you're not even going to believe this. It wasn't a multiple choice. You would put your own input. So it was almost free text, 100%. And then you'd have to calculate it and say, based on this calculation, this is what I am. So we've come a long way. <laughs> so yeah. So today it's being used not only for entrepreneurs, but military spouses, veterans, college students, um, city government officials. It's being used by a massive amount of audiences. So. Okay. All right. Well, that 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 makes sense, and I I kind of get what you know what you're doing and what this was born out of. Um, I, I, I it's going to be interesting, I think, to look at the data in the next couple of years as you have more people go through the process and and what you glean from that. Um, help 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 our audience, which is comprised primarily of, of design firms, both engineering and architectural firms, land, uh, landscape architecture, um, planning, help, help them understand the link between what Brandisco offers and, and how it can maybe potentially speed up their recruitment and hiring process, especially if, if they're a firm that is in maybe a, a, a large military area. Um, where, where there, you know, where there are military bases, or where there are a lot of people from the military that are retiring and looking for, um, f you know, further employment and opportunities. Absolutely, yes. So a couple of ways. So first of all, Brandisco is already proving to do this. So what what I love about this conversation, Randy, is it's not a concept, and it's not well. Maybe this can happen. It is definitely happening. Um, and in order to talk about how it speeds it up, it's important to just give a, a quick high level of what's happening today without Brandisco. Fair enough? So what's happening today, let's take a veteran who wants to go for the engineering industry. Veteran has to start with um, interest. They have to submit an application or interest resume through an ATS system, applicant tracking system. Company then reviews the resume and then does a deeper dive review, right? So today, there's a deeper dive review, there's a phone conversation, there's bringing you in, and all of this has no guarantee. I'm completely doing this to get a feel. I'm asking you what I think are the right questions, and that's a whole different topic, asking the right questions, but I'm really doing everything in a manual way. So if you pause that for a second, and I want you to reimagine what the future looks like. What if we could live in a world where a veteran started at step one, because legally they have to start before Brandisco, that ATS, they have to submit interest. From there, um, we can have a, an HR manager say, great, before I even look at anything next, click on this link, go take Brandisco. If you can multiply that by the hundreds, now by the thousands, right? And you can narrow down because um, ideally you've already benchmarked what works in your firm. And that's another thing, right? When people, when our clients start off using Brandisco, they don't just take the system and willy nilly go happy assessing, right? What starts first, no matter what firm it is, is we build a cultural appropriated benchmark for that firm. So let's say firm uh, ABC down the street says, before we take Brandisco, we want to know what's already working well in this firm. They create a benchmark and that, brench that benchmark gives them uh, a talent profile that they want more of. They want to clone. So now let's reimagine that, that previous scenario. Veteran submits through the ATS um, and then hiring manager says, please click this link. They can do that by the masses. When these, these uh, veterans are clicking on this link, um, what happens is they come back with the talent profile and hopefully the talent profile is in that benchmark that they're already seeking. So right away, they've narrowed down, right, just by prioritizing what they're looking for. From there, imagine a world where I get to have insights on you before I call you. So before the very first conversation, here are some things I can I can tell about you. Your highest and best success factor, your compatibility, how I'm going to experience you, how you think and make decisions. I can also tell what a previous employer thought about you. I can see a recent success story on you. I can tell in which project capacities you thrive. I can tell what you believe to be your highest and best benefit to our organization this year. There are 13, <clears throat> excuse me, dynamic data points that I can tell about you all before the very first call. Okay. Now, if you times that by thousands, this is where you start to speed up that process by 50%. What's also important to note here is we don't just want employers to have a tactical way of using Brandisco. Tactical means, hey, I'm just using it one way, right? One dimensional. No, we want to teach them how to use this same data source systemically. So what if you could take that same data, you could make a hiring decision with it, you've already benchmarked, 
They already meet that criteria. You bring them in, you pass that data source to their new hiring manager, the person they're going to work with day in and day out. You show that hiring manager how to use that same data feedback to engage them in their first 90 days. Days. So now that's data source two systemically. Then you take that 12, uh, 12 months later, that same data source, and you do a look back. You evaluate it. Is that veteran still here? Did we make a good decision? What worked well? So what I just did is I demonstrated three ways to use Brandisco's data. One data source, three ways systemically. I made a hiring decision. I influenced the outcome of the experience on my team this year by making sure I engaged you. And then 12 months later, I made sure that we are making the right decisions based on this data. That's okay. what Brandisco is. Uh, now, that's really interesting. I, I like that whole concept of taking it. I mean, being able to repurpose the information mm -hmm. and using it in multiple ways yeah. across, you know, not just. So it's not just me purchasing the use of Brandisco to do a one time assessment. I get that information, then I throw it away. It's like, well, no, I get that information. Then the hiring manager can apply that information throughout the year. And then at the end of a 12 month recap, as we go through and do a review of that hire, we can kind of look at to see if what we found at the beginning matches up with what we have That's at the right. end. So. That's right. And so with that, Randy, you got it. You hit it right on the head is we are sort of having hiring managers reimagine how to use data. It's Brandisco is, is on the surface. It looks like a great interface tool, but it's really disguised. It's a data intelligence tool. It's about data. That's that's the power. And so you you hit the nail on the head. And this is why um, Sherm uh, has asked us to speak on this topic at a national level is how to use this data intelligence systemically. Yeah, and you know that's and that's a good point. I mean, when you talk to to society of human resource uh, management professionals, um, you know they 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 do a lot in this area. And I know most most of the HR people that listen to this podcast certainly are concerned with data analytics and and making sure that they have the key performance indicators that that tell them that they're doing their job properly, that they are engaging people early and often, that they're getting yeah. the most bang for their buck from, when it, from a recruitment dollar when it comes to recruiting the best and brightest talent, and that, you know, that, that they have a real handle on what the KPIs are that matter for their firm. And that's going to change from firm to firm. They're going to be right. industry KPIs, but then your own firm, your own organization is going to have their own KPIs that you have to keep track of in order to make sure that you you are growing at the level that you want to grow with. That's right. That you, It's almost like you, you read our business model. <laughs> That's exactly how we sell it, is we say, listen, you have industry benchmarking, and then you have what's benchmarking in your industry or your culture, what's right. working. Yeah, because it's different from culture to culture. So as, I, as I'm sitting here, here listening to you describe this, I'm thinking in my head, how would I, if I owned an engineering firm, and, and I know, and I always think about, like my grandfather, you know, he's a, he was a civil engineer and he served in World War II and, and he's, you know, he's passed on now. But, uh, and I certainly uh, appreciate him as my being my grandfather, but also for the dis discipline that he instilled in me. But I remember the stories that he would tell me and, you know, he was the civil engineer. He built bridges, but he also blew bridges up in World War II, right? So mm -hmm. it's almost like, man, you get to create some things, but you also get to destroy some things at the same yeah. time. And most bridge engineers nowadays don't have that task in front of them. So... Uh, but 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 you know I, I always wonder you know how would he have fit into a normal civil engineering firm post whatever experience he had and and so my simple question to you would be this um, say I have some solid veterans on my staff I'm an engineering firm and, and uh, what how could I use Brandisco to use those guys those success stories as a benchmark. For saying, you know what, I've got these three amazing veterans. I want to replicate them yeah. over and over again. Yeah. How would I use Brandisco to do that? Because I know that there's, I know there's farm owners out there that have some <laughs> amazing people, and I'm thinking of one guy right away that I've actually had on this podcast. Uh -huh. He was an outstanding uh, individual in in the military, and then he transitioned over into civilian life, and he's working at a design firm, killing it. Yeah. And, I, and I think of him and I'm just wondering, like, if I was his firm owner and I said, you know, this guy is amazing. I need five more like him. Yeah. How would I utilize Brand Disco to find five more people like that? Absolutely. You clone it. So, yeah, that's what we definitely call cloning and benchmarking. So here's the first step. And we always do exactly what you said as a first step. Um, so we do this in 14 days. We So we partner with a company. A company comes to us and 
expresses their interest in this. And we literally set them up for a unique brand disco account that we customize to them. And that's another thing, Randy, we didn't even talk about it. We're the only one that I know of that can customize it. So we customize it to them. We create them a unique account. We send them a link and we guide them through the experience. We don't say friendly, but we help them through it. So what that looks like is in the first 14 days, we say, go and get your top 10. So if it's a larger firm, we will say, go get your top 10, right? right. And so okay. they go get their top 10. We sort of create a precedent um, out of this top 10. How many have been here for 12 months at least? So we sort of do 12 months, six months, 90 days that are performing well, right? We also will do this across different departments. So there are some people who want to know role appropriation or benchmarking for different job roles. But uh, depending on the requests uh, in a basic benchmarking exercise can happen in 14 days. It happens with a unique link um, that we give out. We walk the company through it. And all they do is send that out to veteran Bob and Nancy. Hey, Bob and Nancy, um, this is only going to take two minutes. Uh, we need you to go ahead and complete the brand disco. Now, usually Bob and Nancy are excited to do it because they have no idea, you know, what, what it's going to say. But Bob and Nancy will also get a really cool instant result. And that's the thing. We still give the end user something instant. So it's instant gratification for them. Then after it's all done, our team will aggregate and analyze that data. And we will give a full on reading of what it means. In fact, just to, just to sort of blow you away, we just did this with a company who had close to 300 veterans take it in a two day period. And this was an energy company. And it was very surprising what the data showed us. The data showed us that 55% uh, of these veterans who took it said, I do my best work when I'm troubleshooting. And that makes sense because they, they get called out when power lines are down, right? So that seems like a very natural result. But what was really the anomaly in this reading is that although they said I get called all the time for troubleshooting, the projects I prefer to work on, if it were left up to me, would actually be proactive projects. That means not called for troubleshooting. I'd rather spend my expertise building things in advance so that these power lines don't go down. So that was very interesting for this company to know, because I think there is a natural assumption that, yes, the kind of folks who are good at this job, they like troubleshooting, when in fact, I can do troubleshooting, but I'm actually going to be best used if you give me proactive measures. And that was in canning data. Well, and I think that's interesting uh, because what you're talking about is the highest and best use of an individual's talent, right? I mean, yeah, there are some things. I mean, I, I and I totally resonate with that because there's some things that I'm amazing at, but I don't necessarily like to do that. That's right. not my natural <laughs> inclination. But there's some other things that I really endeavor to do on a regular basis and that I may not always have the opportunity to do. Exactly. But it sounds like what you're saying is that Brand Disco can kind of demystify that process and 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 help employers to to get the highest and best use out of each of their employees, especially those that have uh, that have uh, that are veterans and that Absolutely. have been that have been tracked through this program. Yes, Brandisco is going to tell you very quickly, Randy, where someone thrives, where they relate to others, and how they excel. Thrive, relate, and excel are our keywords. No, that's that's awesome. So, so again, it sounds like Brand Disco right now in its current iteration is is being used both from a, on a on a data analytics side as yeah. well as from a hiring assessment perspective. Is there any other way to use or to utilize Brand Disco? Yes, there are at least eight recorded ways with case studies. And so okay. <laughs> when okay. we first uh, used it commercially, we used it for conflict resolution. We were called for an emergency. Uh, meeting for a government office that I won't go into, but they need, the hair was on fire. People were feuding and they didn't know why. And Randy, we had everyone take brand disco and we could quickly on paper before we even showed up, the data told us where the feud was, the conflict. So we can use brand disco for conflict resolution. We can use brand disco for um, employee relations, same thing, um, leadership development, career decision-making, hiring, uh, career prep. So before you get the career, how do I position my highest and best talent in the most meaningful way? Um, we can use Brandisco to show people how to build relationships on social media, on LinkedIn, how to transform a cold connection into a purpose-driven conversation. So recorded, Brandisco has been used eight ways uh, from a mainstream mar market. 
Well, and I like that. I mean, because one of that's one of the things that firms ask us to help out with a lot, which is how do I d help my people become better at being brand ambassadors for my organization, yeah. right? Sometimes, yeah. you know, you work in a place and you really like it, but you don't tell anybody. And a lot of times engineers and architects get, get a bad knock because they're <laughs> quote unquote, quote unquote, introverts. So yeah. they, they never talk to anybody. So one of the <laughs> things that I like to do is encourage engineers and architects as often as possible. A, if you work at a good place, let everybody know. That's and, right. And here's how you extend the brand. And, you know, and I always, I, and I always, t and I think I mentioned this to you when we spoke on the phone, but I, I, whenever I go into a training and I do one, I ask everyone as a show of hands, how many of you people know somebody that does the same work that you do at another firm? Mm -hmm. And I would say 80% of the people raised their hand. And I'm like, well, there you go. I mean, that's your recruitment forces right there. That's if right. You, if each and every one of you that just raised your hand learns to become a better brand ambassador for your organization, for the brand that you represent at your company, then you can logically help people make the connection as to why your firm is a great resting spot for their next opportunity. I completely and, agree. Yeah. yeah. And I, I just think it's just something. And I, I say that for my audience because I really want to remind them of that uh, aspect of it. I mean, too often we're looking to go out and play, pay, um, a, you know, a, a recruiting firm, a bunch of money. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, Zwive Group does recruiting. It's, it's something that we've done for 30 years. It, there is a lot of nobility in that helping firms find great talent that might be under a rock somewhere. But for all those people that are like right out and in, in, in front of us, but we never engage them, yeah. getting your employees to look at it differently and to start thinking about it from a branding perspective about passing that good news around to everyone really increases the odds that you're going to get more and more people that are going to come through your doors and say, hey, you know, my friend Bob works here. My friend Sue works here. And, you know, they really rave about this place. I just need to find out what it's all about. You know, yeah. can I sit down with you and have a have a have a cup of coffee and or a beer or whatever and learn more about your firm? Yeah. No, I love it. You're right on on track. And in closing, this is why Brandisco is the best tool for technology and engineering firms, is because Brandy Brandisco was built for the modern workforce, for the new era, the age of the individual. So it's it's definitely not your traditional assessment. We're gonna pick up uh, not only a person's personality performance, but their passion. What do they do off of work and how could that be leveraged while they're at work? So how teams collaborate together, contribute. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, man, that, there you have it. I mean, that that in and of itself makes makes certainly makes it worth a, a closer look. So so right. Dawn, tell me um, if if, you know, any of my listening audience that 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 is uh, taking on this podcast and uh, is interested in finding out more about Brand Disco, how would they get in touch with you? And what's the best way to connect with you? And, and give us the website address and, and um, the best way to learn more about Brand Disco. Sure. It's going to be www.getbranddisco.com. That's two Ds, getbranddisco.com. And they can actually just email us at team at getbranddisco.com. Our team is always checking. And our phone number, if you'd like to just pick up the phone and call, is 704-709-0329, 704-709-0329, extension 101. Okay. And then so, so for, for our listening audience, and I'm going to put Dawn on the spot, if you mention that you heard about this on the Zweig Letter podcast, yes. uh, I think Dawn, will, I'm sure, will come up with something special for you Very special. Uh, as an introductory for how this program works and to try to figure out a way to give you a taste test of yeah, what yeah. Brand Disco is all about. Is that right? Or That's right. Just okay. for you and your listening audience, Randy, yes. only okay. for you. Okay. We <laughs> We're willing to give out um, a complimentary demo period that allows them to use Brandisco with 10 of their people, which okay. is really nice for that benchmarking. Yeah, absolutely. So we're absolutely. doing that complimentary for, for companies who are looking to come on board with us. Okay. So. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. Um, Don Nicole and Brandisco, they are, they are doing things the right way, especially when it comes to um, finding and identifying really great talent coming out of the military. Um, you also mentioned military spouses, which yes. is another big thing. I mean, certainly if you if you work at a design firm or you or you are working in a an environment or or an area where there is a a military base and 
where there are military bases, there are military spouses. And, yes. you know, you might be able to figure out a way to leverage it from that perspective as well. So um, there are so many ways that we can do our part, especially to help out those that have given so much to this country. And I kind of wish we had had this episode on Veterans Day, but we didn't. Yeah. And that's that's fine. But we're, we're still in the same month of Veterans Day. So that's that's, that's right. all good. And this episode will come out the last day of the month. So um, I really want to encourage you to to get some more information about Brand Disco and uh, connect with Dawn. And, and, and of course, you guys all know how to connect with me if you have any questions about this. But Dawn, thank you so much for coming on this Wide Letter podcast. We really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to be with us today, to enlighten us about data analytics and um, the hiring process, especially when it comes to um, uh, veterans and also this great product that you have developed over the past few years. So we look forward to hearing more about what you guys are doing. So thank you. Yeah, perfect. So Dawn, Nicole, everybody. Um, listen, folks, I really appreciate you guys taking time to listen to this episode of the Zweig Letter Podcast. We have a lot of great stuff in store, uh, especially for the last month of this year, 2018. So got a couple more episodes before the new year starts. And I cannot believe that 2019 is just around the corner. So uh, we're, we are trying to get ready for that. And uh, we're, we hope we're, our goal is to bring you more great episodes like this one. Uh, with with helpful information, insight, and and just advice that that can help you to continue to run your design firm more efficiently, more effectively, and and more profitably. So uh, really, really appreciate you, the listening audience. And uh, again, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this. There's always uh, y- there's always availability of the Zweig Letter newsletter, which I would encourage you to get a copy of. Uh, you can just go to zweiggroup.com click on the Zweig letter icon. And right there, you can get a copy of the Zweig letter delivered uh, to your inbox every Monday at 12 noon. I highly encourage you to do that. You can get it for yourself individually, as well as for your company for free. So I really want to encourage you to take advantage of that. And also Civil plus Structural Magazine, click on that icon too at zweiggroup.com. And uh, you can also get our our magazine publication, Civil Post Structural Engineer Magazine, and and uh, I think it's um, it's a great magazine to learn more about what uh, what's happening in the industry and um, what, what role you play in that. So, folks, I want to thank you so much again for listening to this episode of the Swag Letter Podcast. As always, I'm your host Randy Wilburn, and we really appreciate you. And uh, just remember, uh, our goal here is to elevate the industry one step at a time. You guys have a wonderful day and I'll be in touch soon. Take care. Thanks for tuning in to this Zweig Letter podcast episode. If you want more wisdom and inspiration, in addition to information about M&A, strategic planning, HR, and marketing your firm, subscribe now to the digital version of the Zweig Letter free of charge. Just visit thezweigletter.com slash subscribe and leave your email address. Your free subscription will begin immediately.